so you're dealing with pain in your foot. Today, I wanna to give you my personal unique recommendations on how to address a lot of foot pain. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sonam and I'm an interventional sport medicine doctor located up here in Canada. Now, if you find any of these videos helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe and share it just so that it helps the algorithm so more people can see the educational content that I'm producing. Now let's get back to you know my unique recommendations on how to treat foot pain. So one of the most common complaints I get in my clinical practice is I have pain in my foot. Think plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, um, metatarsalgia or ball of foot pain, bunions or Taylor's bunions. And I find that a lot of these foot conditions are actually due to very similar things. So a lot of my recommendations are actually very similar for the different conditions. So let's take you through step-by-step step, my six recommendations on how to treat foot pain. Number one, footwear. So our feet are not meant to be squeezed into tight footwear. And if you think about it, a baby is born with the feet that is the widest at the toes. And if you look at a lot of cultures where they don't wear shoes on a day-to-day -day basis, most of them actually have very natural looking feet and the fact that the toes are the widest part of their foot. The problem is a lot of modern footwear takes us away and we have a tapered toe box in the variety of the shoes that we wear. Now this is starting to change, but for the majority of kind of my life and the time before, that's what we've been seeing in footwear, whether it's high heels, running shoes, dress shoes, just think about it. Everything tapers together in a narrow toe. And what happens is that just causes toes to get squished. It throws off your balance and it's not great for the bone structure of your foot. So more recently, more and more, the barefoot style footwear movement has been coming up. And what does that mean? It means toes or shoes that are anatomically shaped to your foot. So if you take out the sole of your shoe or the liner of your shoe and you step on it with bare feet, it should fit your feet and your feet should not come off that liner. Now, with minimalist shoes particular, a lot of them are being created with very little soles. But for patients who have foot pain, I do not encourage this whatsoever. What I encourage is people to start with wide toed footwear. So you get a thicker sole, but you have more room for the feet to move into. And I have some really good recommendations on different brands, different websites that people can reach out to that are not affiliated with me just to get some information about this. And I'm gonna put this down in the description. But the key is really to give your feet space to move. And I find this was the number one change that a lot of people find that will help ultimately treat almost all of their foot concerns. Number two, toe spacers. So I know this sounds a bit funny, but I often recommend that my patients get, pick up a pair of $10 toe spacers and start wearing them at home. And I'll put a picture up here so that you can take a look at what they look like. Now, the problem is when we've been treating our feet or binding them in kind of tight footwear most of our lives, our toes get really close together and we lose the ability to move our toes independently like our hands. And what I encourage people to do is actually pick up these toe spacers and wear them at home so they can start you know, opening up the spaces between their feet and also opening up the soft tissue behind them. When things are tight and brought together all the time, the tissues between them also become tight, taut, and don't want to lose their pliability. So I recommend people start with toe spacers, wear them five minutes in an hour, while you're walking around the house, then work up to wearing them, you know, an hour at a time, wear them during your strengthening and physiotherapy exercises. You do not need to wear them while you're sleeping. The key is to wear them while you're moving so that the foot learns that it has the ability to move a bit better. This is really helpful with people with ball of foot pain, Morton's neuroma, so like a little bit of, you know, nerve irritation between the toes, and also people who have like plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendinosis. A lot of my old patients actually tell me when they wear toe spacers, their balance significantly increases. So that's another great side effect that you get by realigning the, uh, the bones of your feet. Number three, the strength of your inner foot. So most physiotherapists and other allied healthcare professionals, when they treat foot pain, they really think about the calf. They really think about rolling the ball of the foot out. But what a lot of people are missing is strengthening the inside muscles of your foot. So our foot has a variety of bones in it, but it also has a number of different muscles, much like in our hands. So we have all these intrinsic muscles in our hands, we have the same thing in our feet. And the problem is the vast majority of us, because we've been wearing shoes all the time, we've lost the strength in our toes and in our feet to create a stable arch, but also a strong arch as we are moving in and about. Now, there is one way to test this for you. I want you to get to a wall and I want you to hold onto the wall and then I want you to go up on your tiptoes as high as you can. And if the front toes curl as your heels are high, 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 that means that the intrinsic foot muscles in your, in your feet are actually quite weak and you don't have the ability to stabilize the foot in the muscles of your feet. Now, why is this important? So if you think about the muscles being a form of stability for the bones around the foot, 
You also have tendons and ligaments, and they're stronger tissue that also helps create a stable frame. It creates some arches in your feet. If your muscles are weak, your poor tendons and ligaments have to actually act uh, stronger, act firmer and become stiffer. So ultimately you develop things like plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendinosis, because what they're doing is these tendons and ligaments need to become very stiff to create the stability that the muscles cannot. So how do you go about fixing this? There are very specific foot-based programs that are online now that I recommend some of my patients look into. I'm gonna leave a description about some of these programs down below so you can take a look um, into these programs and see if any of them are right for you. But oftentimes I encourage people to look at these programs because they're very specifically made to address foot specific concerns, looking at the foot and then moving up the chain. Number four, soft tissue work. So we talked a little bit about this when we were wearing toe spacers, but when our feet are nice and tight and unfortunately bound in tight shoes all day, our, our, the tissue becomes very, very dense, very uh, tight and very irritated. So it's really important to kind of get in there, whether or not it's massage it with your fingers in between your toes, put your hands in between your toes and kind of stretch out your toes as well. And also roll the bottom of your foot with a lacrosse ball, with a golf ball, whatever you find is beneficial. The key is really to kind of just get a little bit of a daily routine to open up the tissues in and around the area of the foot so then you can strengthen around that and also create just more space around the area so nerves are not irritated as much, muscles are not irritated as much, and the bones are also not irritated as much. Number five, balance work. So when a lot of people come in uh, and talk about foot pain with me, we forget that we have the rest of our body. And what we don't realize is that a lot of foot pain also stems from poor balance. And a lot of balance not only is neurological, but it comes from hip stability. So the problem is when your hip is not stable, your knees can cave in, the foot will roll in, we call that pronation of the foot, and it can cause an unstable base. The other thing is when the feet are tight together and the toes are tight together, so for example, you have a bunion or your toes are nice and just squished together, you don't have a stable base of support. So balance work works both on glute strength, but also foot stability and foot strength as well. So whether it's get a two by four beam at home and start balancing on it, balance on the curbs on your, uh, on your driveway, or pick up a little balance beam and you can take a look. A lot of people find that they get a lot of benefit when they start standing on it. It's playful, it's fun, but also like I have a balance beam at my home, for example, and I do it when I'm watching TV and I find that it fires everything up from the foot all the way up to the glute. So it's a really good all-in-one exercise that kind of just tracks everything and, and addresses everything up the chain. Number six, orthotics. So believe it or not, I actually don't believe in orthotics as a physician from, for long-term use. A lot of my patients will come to me and they'll ask me for orthotics prescriptions, but what I try to tell them is, think of an orthotic like a cast. There's definitely a time and place for them. And you know, there's certain genetic foot conditions that need orthotics long-term. But I say to my patients, when you break an arm, how long are you gonna cast for? Approximately six weeks. The same thing I want to kind of akin to an orthotic. When you have a really bad flare of Achilles tendinosis or plantar fasciosis, what do you wanna do? Yeah, get into an orthotic, make yourself feel better, let's settle down the pain and inflammation and let's build everything back up then. So I really encourage people to think about orthotics as you know a short-term solution, not a long-term solution. You do not need to be in orthotics for the rest of your life. Believe it or not, I was told the same thing. I then developed a really bad case of plantar fasciitis in medical school during my surgical rotation. And I actually used all of these methods to help treat and cure my foot issues. So you know, as a physician, I actually practice what I preach. I do a lot of my foot stability exercises. I own a balance beam. And I also wear a lot of wide toed footwear. And since then it's really helped immensely at keeping foot pain away. So these recommendations, they work. They just take time to work. I hope you enjoyed a bit of a unique perspective on how to treat foot pain. I really try to avoid injecting foot pain unless someone has exhausted all of these. The key is it takes time. It takes time and some diligence, but if you can really start on the right path, you can help improve your balance, prevent falls long-term, but also prevent foot pain from ever recurring. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. For now, that's all.